What's going on, everyone? This is Necro Steel, and don't worry, just keep calm because this narrated Wi Fi battle is going to be totally awesome. Now, today we are not taking a journey to Pig Farce, but this is another battle that I actually had from MTAC. I wanted to make sure I got those both up this week so that they were still relevant. Um, you can see that I had the same team as last time. Of course, Fortress, Pack in the Entry Hazard, especially Defensive Wall. Gonna try the Belly Drum, Sword Puff again. I really wanted that to work out. Uh, of course, Rotom has Choice Specs. And Noivern is Oracle the Noivern, the first one that I trained actually. So he has Boom Burst, Flamethrower, Draco Meteor, and Hurricane running a modest nature. Getting as much power as you can behind that. I actually screwed up in the very beginning of this match. And this is this is why um you just you cannot underestimate people. Whenever I am battling new people in person, I tend to test them to see what type of battle they are. And so I was testing my opponent here, and she was like, that's cool, you can set up entry hazards, I'm going to put up a substitute. And I'm going to start swords dancing in your face. And I was just like, great, I can't do anything about that. This fortress, actually, normally I try to run um, Volt Switch or Bulldoze or even Earthquake on Fortress, because in Fort Gen it was very popular to switch on Heatran on Fortress. But here I don't have any of those things. So, she's going to get her swords dances up. Um, with the leftovers, she's going to be back at full HP with a substitute out, and all I can do is hit it with a gyro ball. Not not the best situation to be in, really. Uh, I do hope and pray that I can break her sub before I leave, and I get a critical hit, and that doesn't even break the sub. That's because of Bisharp's naturally high, fantastic special defense. You can see why he is really just the alpha male when he's leading packs of Pontiard. He can take those hits, and those are resisted iron heads that she's hitting me with, but after plus four, that's a 2 hit KO. So Fortress goes down, I did get up Stealth Rocks, you know, he left his mark on the field. I normally don't like sacrificing my lead like that, but I didn't think I'd be in that position. Now here, I needed to check to see if she had Sucker Punch, and that was really, really stupid of me because I could have just gone into Pangoro. Of course, um, Noivern does have the Infiltrator ability that allows it to hit through substitutes, and I didn't know if she had Sucker Punch. Uh, so I just, and here I see if I had just gone out into Pangoro in the first place, he can take a plus four Sucker Punch. No problem, this is Choice Scar Pangoro. No HP investment, um, just max attack, max uh, speed, and then a little bit in defense, actually. And he can take two of those and then finish it off with a Storm Throw. Whenever I see Storm Throw, I picture Abel from Street Fighter 4 <laughs> doing his throw where he whips the opponent around and slams him on their head. Yes. Um, unfortunately, I can't really do anything about Talonflame. She has Acrobatics instead of um, Brave Bird, which is good for me, actually. Brave Bird would, of course, do more damage, but Acrobatics is a lot easier to wall. Uh, acrobatics, you really need some Swords Dances up for it to be threatening at all. Now here, I I over I ended up over predicting a little bit. I went for the Shadow Ball. I really should have gone for Calm Mind because she obviously is not going to stay in with the amount of damage that Acrobatics was doing, especially since she had lost her Gale Wings ability. So if I had gone for the Calm Mind, I would have been able to uh, do a I would have been able to one-hit K the Gardevoir for one thing. And then I probably would have still had... Well, I guess since she got a critical hit, it didn't matter. The Moonblast would have bypassed the special defense. So I don't know. I guess I guess I did make the right play, not knowing that I was going to get a critical hit. Now, uh, Gardevoir does get a speed boost after it evolves, but Pangoro was still going to be faster than that with a Choice Scarf. And she actually has her uh, Talonflame properly EV'd or, uh, to make sure it has an odd HP number that is not divisible by four, so that means she's going to have one HP left after uh, she actually has the Stealth Rocks hit her. And I didn't really know what to switch into this thing now that I don't have Kofakrigus anymore. So I ended up taking it out with the Volt Switch after letting my Rotom get to critically low HP. Not the best play there, I gotta say. Uh, I really wish that I had set up some more entry hazards rather than trying to break those subs with the uh, the gyro balls from my fortress, but that's okay. I should have gone for play rough instead of going for return. Play rough actually may have KO'd with it being neutral damage and stab, 
But since I missed it in the pre the battle that I had right before this, if you all saw the battle at the beginning of the week, I was really afraid to go for it. So I actually just went for a return. Got some nice damage off. Pangoro is going to pick up another KO. And now um, Ninetales comes out. It is a very pretty shiny Ninetales, but I outspeed this one as well, just being Choice Scarfed. Now, unfortunately, uh, Mulan comes in, and I'm locked into Crunch, which means I cannot take out this Mian Xiao, and also he might have Fake Out, so the better play here is going to be to Death Fodder my Rotom, which definitely would not have died to a Drain Punch if he were at higher uh, full HP. Uh, then again, I wouldn't have outsped it anyway. But now I get to bring back in Pangoro and go for the Storm Throw. Hopefully that's going to be enough to finish it off, and unfortunately it is not. I, I'm just barely short of getting that wonderful, delicious double down wrapping the, just the, the chicken and the vibe. Ah, yeah, anyways though, still a darn good battle. Could have played better at the outset. Thank you very much for the battle, and uh, hopefully I get to have more battles when I go to MTAC next year or GMX later on this year. So I hope you all enjoyed this match. Have a great weekend, and if you are participating in the April Friendly, best of luck. I can't wait to do a team analysis. Uh, I've had about 13 matches today already, and I'm 11 and 2. And I've learned a lot about the different things that I should have expected or have worked towards, rather. So it'll be fun to do a team breakdown after the friendly is over. So guys, have best of luck in your matches, and I will see you all later. Bye-bye now.